Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, we're doing a review of the Sony KDL50R550A 50-inch 50 3D LED 1080p Smart TV. Uh, so let's start with the basics, the screen. It has a 1080p screen, obviously, with uh, backlighting. Uh, it has 120Hz refresh rate. Um, you'll notice that the design is very sleek. I'll try to show you a better angle. It's uh, passive 3D, which uh, I personally find to work better than, uh, you know, 3D movies in theaters. I played, say, I watched Iron Man 3 in theaters. I watched Iron Man 3 here on this TV. I noticed that the 3D pop out works a lot better on this TV uh, than it does in theaters. Not only that, it's because it's passive 3D, uh, you're getting four 3D glasses. Uh, these are the type of glasses that do not require their own power source. You just put them on and you're good to go. Of course, because it's a Sony TV, it has Bravia Sync, which means if you have additional Bravia uh, Sony devices, you can sync them all together. The TV itself, in terms of audio, has Dolby Digital Support with 5.1 channels. Uh, it has two 10-watt speakers facing down, so they're actually hidden, but believe me, they're quite good. I'll do a sound test for you later. Uh, power consumption, while the TV's on, will consume a maximum of 121 watts. Uh, while it's off, it only consumes 0.2 watts. The TV itself with the stand weighs a total of 41 pounds. Okay, so the remote itself is fairly long. Um, it might look a little intimidating at first, but it's not that bad. Uh, as you can notice, you have very generic stuff like input mode selections. You can select your different HDMI ports. Um, you have pick off, which basically turns the screen off, but audio continues to play. Um, so it's great if you can run something like an audio app. As you see, the screen has turned off, but if I just press any button, the screen will turn back on. Uh, so you have, you know, fast forward, pause, this all works great on uh, Hulu and Netflix. These buttons will depend on what type of app you're using. You have photo frame mode, sync menu, uh, sleep. Oh, some of these functions are just, there's just too much detail to go into. Uh, this is your navigation, display, numbers, volume, channel, and that's pretty much the most important parts. Okay, so I'm off my tripod, so it might be a little shaky cam right now. Um, basically, as you can see, this is the st stand of the TV right there. Just that thin chrome, that's all there is. Um, holding up the TV, it's extremely sleek, looks very sharp. And over on the left side is where you have uh, the first set of ports. So as you can see, we have a USB stick plugged in with some like home movies and stuff. A second USB port right underneath it. Two HDMI ports here. And moving just down a little bit, here you have power, uh, you know, channel and input selection at the back of the TV, which you shouldn't be really using anyway. You should be using the remote most of the time. Uh, you have two more HDMI ports, making a total of four. You have one set of component in, optical audio output, internet for wired internet, although there is built-in Wi-Fi, uh, so that it's very convenient in case you don't have uh, the availability to plug in internet wire. You have uh, audio out and, of course, antenna cable in. And there, of course, is where the power is plugged. All right, so one thing I was a little disappointed in is that this TV has uh, no swivel. So you can't pivot the TV left or right. The, the stand and the TV, once they're connected, are stationary. However, I have to say the viewing angles are excellent on this TV, so I'm not really that disappointed. Okay, so selecting the uh, input button on the remote gives you very generic stuff, like, you know, selecting your HDMI ports. Um, simply pressing the home button, of course, gives you the smart TV options. Um, here, you can go through your settings. Um, there's actually a power saving mode as well, which is an additional bonus. Here you can go through your setup, you can set up your Wi-Fi, your wired internet, all that good stuff. This is pretty boring and generic stuff, so I'm, I'm going to actually just skip this part entirely. Now for those of you that have DirecTV, uh, according to Sony, as you can see here, um, you can enjoy it without a receiver. This is a uh, photo frame mode. It's just, your, it's just a, ni a nice calendar background with some uh, generic music playing. It's sample music playing uh, from the TV itself. Uh, media is basically uh, inputs from your uh, USB stick or your network. You can actually connect to your computer and your network. Now there is a problem with the network connectivity and that problem is in the fact that files can only be shared through Windows uh, Media Center. So for example, you can't share MKV files. Favorites is just uh, boring stuff. Of course, you have a browser built in as well. There it is, simple browser. Nothing really to see here. So um, I can actually use the remote. I'm actually, it's very faint, but I can actually see which links I'm selecting as I'm navigating up and down, but we'll just, you know, skip that. Okay, so pressing the home button, and then if you go to uh, applications, this is like, you get a whole bunch of different options here. You get a, like a ridiculous amount of apps to go through. 
I can't even begin to start showing you what's available. Uh, but yes, there's also a search function and stuff, but uh, I just want to give you a really rough idea because this video will be way too long if it go into all of them. So internet contents is basically uh, video streaming content. Here you can see, this is the most popular generic ones are listed, but if you go to internet video, here you can see the full list that's available. At any point you can pause the video if you notice a logo that you're interested in. Uh, I'm not going to list them all because there's just way too many as you can see, it just keeps going on and on and on. But you do have the most important ones like Flickster, uh, Checking uh, Weather, Pandora, Hulu, Netflix, Picasa. Now in case you buy this TV and you don't have any 3D movies available right on hand, you do have this option here called 3D Experience which is basically you can stream uh, 3D content and I can tell you that it's amazing. You can stream 3D movie trailers. So I'm going to go into Hulu just as a quick example because it's really popular especially in the US. Um, the load time on this thing is fantastic as you can see. Let's go to my Q profile. Uh, I'll show you a list of favorites that I have with my family. Um, let's go to more subscriptions. As you can see, everything's loading really quick. Uh, my mom watches Carnation Street a lot. It's HD and it, it plays like super smooth and it fast forwards like really quick. Okay, so I'm just giving you like a YouTube app demo. Um, as you can see, it's streaming YouTube videos in HD. This is from my own channel. Um, one thing that's neat is that you can basically do is you can actually convert videos from 2D to 3D. Uh, you simply press the 3D button on your, on your remote and there it says 3D display. Press it and actually you just select simulated 3D. I have to say that this thing does a better job than I anticipated. Um, you know, playing some videos, home videos taken from my wedding for example, um, you know, people dancing in the banquet hall. It, you you have some people popping out um, when they're dancing in front of the stage. It's, it's it's it works fantastic. I never anticipated it to work that good. In case you do have a movie that is already 3D ready, um, and the picture is side by side, then you select side by side. If you have one on top of the other, then you just select over under. So it it does a great job. Some apps actually support 2D to 3D. Example right now, I can do it with uh, YouTube videos. I can do it inside uh, Hulu, so I can make Hulu videos um, 3D. It doesn't work in Netflix though, unfortunately, so you can't watch Netflix videos in 3D. <clears throat> but anything on, say, your USB stick, um, it, it can simulate it into 3D and it does a great job. Now, you, the thing I find really ironic about this TV is that you can't play MPO files, which is basically 3D pictures. I find this extremely ironic because I have a Sony digital camera, which is what's recording this video right now and it takes 3D pictures. The irony is that it's fairly new um, and this Sony TV can't even play MPO files even taken with a Sony digital camera. Uh, it's extremely bizarre but that is unfortunately the case. However, 3D pictures aren't even that great in the first place but it's still not an excuse. I'm about 15, I'm exactly 15 feet away actually I measured. I'm gonna do a volume test for you guys. It won't be as uh, noticeable as me sitting here with my own ears, but let me give you a rough idea of how good it is. The 25. Okay, right now it's at 50, which is only half the volume, and I'm having to kind of shout over the TV, and I'm 15 feet away from it. So speaker volume on this thing is fantastic. So I'm in the 3D uh, Experience app, I just wanted to mention as I'm kind of just going down, showing you how many uh, categories are available. This TV clarity is unreal. It's one of the sharpest 1080p TVs I've ever seen in my life. But when it comes to uh, indoor lighting, you don't get much glare on the TV at all. It's, it's pretty good in that way. For those of you that are wondering which video file formats are supported with this TV, I'll put a list of them in the video description. Just simply expand the video description and you'll find a list from Sony's official website. Um, what I want to mention is that you'll notice that MKV is not listed there. However, I have played MKV video files through the USB ports. So even though Sony says it doesn't support it, it's a bonus that actually it does indeed play uh, MKV videos through the USB port. Okay, there's one thing I want to demonstrate for you guys, or rather lack of uh, <laughs> being able to demo it. Now this device, this TV, does support Miracast, which basically means I can wirelessly mirror what's on my cell phone or tablet to my TV. Of course, your Android device must support that f function. Now as you can see right now, uh, it has searched and it has found the TV, KDL50R550A. 
uh, what I'm gonna do now is try to mirror it onto the TV and here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna tap the TV. So as you can see, it says registration failed for no reason. What you're currently seeing is me basically wearing the 3D glasses on top of my prescription glasses. And I have to admit they fit very comfortably. They don't interfere with my prescription glasses at all. Okay, so to break this review down to its final score, I would give this TV a four out of a five. And here's why. The pros of the device is that basically it's it was a great price uh, considering it's 3D. The assembly of the TV was unbelievably easy. The 120 Hertz refresh rate is outstanding. It's unbelievable how smooth the picture is. But I think it's thanks to the uh, motion flow technology by Sony that makes it even smoother than some of the other TVs I see on the market that have 120 hertz refresh rate. Picture quality is outstanding. It even makes low quality videos and pictures look better than anywhere else I've seen. The volume is pretty decent as I demonstrated for you guys. It has decent USB media playback, especially considering that MKV was not listed on the official Sony website. MKV files are indeed supported, so it's basically a 3D TV but also a media player all in one. Converting 2D to 3D works fantastic. In fact, it was much better than I ever anticipated. As for 3D viewing itself, a lot of people are concerned that it strains their eyes. My family and I watched uh, Star Trek Into Darkness, which is over two hours long, I believe, and all four of us, none of us had any strain on our eyes. We, we felt fine after watching the movie. The body itself has a very sleek design and then it's extremely thin. Then of course, there's the option on the remote like pick off which turns the screen off and you want to play Pandora and not consume too much electricity, you can do that. I know I mentioned this just a little bit before, but I want to mention it again. The amount of apps available on this thing is unreal. Now, I know the interface isn't the prettiest, but I'm more about picture quality and functionality, and I think this thing goes above and beyond what's available compared to a lot of the competition out there on the market. And lastly, it is a passive 3D TV, which means you don't need any uh, powered uh, 3D glasses. However, there are a few cons with this TV which prevented it from being perfect. The first is that it cannot play MPO file formats, which is 3D pictures. The UI on this thing isn't that attractive. And lastly, Miracast doesn't work properly uh, most of the time. So overall, definitely a TV worth checking out, especially considering its price. So if you found this video useful, check out my website in the video description and Facebook link and Google Plus link. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe and thanks for watching.